Okay, welcome again, everyone, to today's TDL member forum for June 2022. My name is Christy Park and my pronouns are she, her. I'm the executive director of the Texas Digital Library and I'm so glad that you've all joined us today. As we gather together in this shared virtual space, uh, I wanna just acknowledge the physical spaces, the land from which we all join, all located on the indigenous lands of Turtle Island which is the ancestral name for what is now called North America. TDL staff works fully remotely and we all are joining from our own specific places in Texas and outside of Texas as well. But I joined from Austin uh, where the Tonkawa were among the traditional stewards of the land before their forcible removal. I invite you to share your own land acknowledgements in chat if you'd like to do that. Here's our agenda for today. We'll follow the usual pattern uh, with some updates from me about conferences that we've been to recently. Um, you may have heard of one of one or two of them. Uh, the some updates about our racial equity action plan and uh, a feedback mechanism that you may have forgotten about. And then we'll have our updates on services and projects and community updates followed by time for questions. So um, we've got a we've got our full staff usual staff presence back in the forum today after a few months of missing folks. So it'll be me and, and our deputy director Courtney Muma, our DPLA service coordinator Elliot Williams, and our communications manager Leah DeForest speaking with you today. Okay, so moving on into our first director's update. This is our first TDL forum since we joined together for TCDL. And I can't believe it's already been a month, uh, nearly a month since we uh, held the conference. I want to thank again everyone who took part in TCDL this year from our committee led by Amanda Zarang from Texas Women's University and Christina Kellum from UNT um, to our committee members, Diane Lopez, Gabby Hernandez, Adrian Kane, Diana Morganti, Bruce Herbert, Ming Yu Chen, Adrian Shapiro, and Cynthia Henry. Um, and also to all of our attendees and presenters and workshop leaders and birds of a feather leaders. Um, it was just a really great experience and you all did a phenomenal job. I also want to just thank Cynthia, especially Cynthia Henry, for her work chairing the awards committee this year. And on the screen here, on the slide, you can see pictured this year's awards winners, along with our keynote speaker, Elaine L. Westbrooks, who was just wonderful. Um, I want to congratulate everyone who was nominated for a TDL award, as well as those who um, who were selected for an award. We are so grateful for everything you all do. And we want to congratulate again this year's awards winners, Michael Shensky of UT Austin, Stephen Sloan of Baylor's Institute of Oral History, the Scholarly Communications and Metadata team at a and Libraries, DJ Lee, Sarah Potvin, David Lowe, and Jeanette Ho, Ji Hong Zhu of Texas A&M Libraries, Misha Coleman, Ali Gennels, and Chloe Santiago of UT School of Information, Margaret Culberson, and Michelle Johnson from the William J. Hill Texas Artisans and Artists Archive, and Christina Chan Park of Baylor University and Alexa Height from AM Corpus Christi. This was just a, a really great and exciting and inspiring group of awards winners. So congratulations to all of you. Our committee, our conference committee is still working. So they're publishing all of the recordings and conference proceedings to YouTube and the TDL repository. And we'll be sharing out links to all those playlists and to the collection of uh, presentation slides as soon as they're ready later this summer. That work takes a little bit of time and we're really grateful to those committee members who are undertaking that work. We look forward to reviewing your feedback about this year's conference in our survey. It is still open, so if you haven't provided feedback yet, please do so. Um, and you can also contact us at info at tdl.org if you have any questions or suggestions about TCDL. We are laying the groundwork for a return to in-person TCDL next year, so stay tuned as we kind of firm up some plans for that, we'll definitely keep you posted. 
Okay, moving on to another conference that took place, was it just last week? It seems amazing that that was last week. Um, we had nine folks from the Texas Digital Library community attending the International Conference on Open Repositories in Denver, Colorado uh, last week. You can see eight of us pictured there on in that left-hand picture on the slide. Um, Santi, we couldn't, we couldn't find Santi Thompson when uh, we took the photo, but he was there too. I don't have photographic evidence, but he was there. Um, representing TDL staff and six of our member institutions. So that was really exciting to be in person with these folks again, and TDL was well represented um, at the Open Repositories Conference. Nick Woodward and I were joined by three of our members, Colleen Lyon, Alexa Height, and Emily Johnson on a panel where we talked about the TDL model for providing shared open repository infrastructure. And Melissa Morrow from Texas Tech Libraries presented a poster on behalf of the AV Accessibility and Digital Collections Steering Group that has presented a series of webinars and events over the past several months. And the poster tied for second place in the poster competition. So yay, TDL, and congrats to Melissa. She did a great job representing us. Um, this was just a, a really fun event. I've put, we'll share out links to um, those two presentations, the poster, and the panel slides that we've uh, put in the TDL repository, so you can take a look. Okay. Moving on, um, just a quick update um, that the updated version of our Racial Equity Action Plan is now published in the TDL repository. As you probably remember from previous forums, this document represents our ongoing efforts to articulate the concrete measures that TDL commits to take to dismantle white supremacy within our organization and, and associated communities. So this document was re reviewed and approved by our governing board and then open for public comment throughout May. And we wanna thank everyone who reviewed and commented on it. Uh, this is version two of the plan and we're committing to review it uh, once a year. It is a living document and we'll, we'll continue to update it and refine it really throughout the year and publish a new version at least annually. So um, you can find it in our repository if you're interested in, in reviewing the um, final version two product there. And finally, I wanna take a second to remind everybody about an opportunity for providing feedback to TDL, which we've had for a while, which is the, the TDL suggestion box. This is a Google form for providing anonymous or not um, feedback to TDL about anything related to our consor consortial work together. And like I said, we've had it for a while, but as part of the racial equity action plan review, we we looked over our policies and procedures around this method for providing feedback. Um, and we wanted to remind you about its existence and also update you on how we handle feedback coming from this form. So Leah's gonna provide a link to it, the form in chat if you wanna take a look or use it. Um, but any feedback that comes through this form is reviewed at least once a month, but really usually twice a month by the TDL's directors, that's Courtney and me. And the plan is to use this forum to address any questions or suggestions or other feedback that comes through the forum, unless it we don't think it's appropriate. And we have some parameters for when we wouldn't address something through a, this public forum. That includes if there's not enough information in the feedback or, or context to respond effectively, if doing so would violate the privacy of anyone, individual or individuals. Um, if someone providing feedback requests a personal individual response rather than a public one, so you do have the option in the form to provide your personal information and request a response back. Um, and if you do that, we wouldn't address the concerns publicly. Or if the feedback is abusive or just blatantly out of scope, we wouldn't address it in this forum. Um, 
but anything else we want we want to hear from you and we want to have a, a mechanism for addressing any questions um, or feedback publicly with our community so we hope you'll use this uh, mechanism for doing that if if you want to you can also always just contact me or courtney or really any of us on the tdl staff or use our info at tdl.org email if you want to ask questions um, or voice concerns but we do want to provide this way of providing anonymous feedback as well. Okay, so let's move into our services and projects updates. Uh, starting with DSpace and journal hosting. So we don't have any major updates re related to DSpace hosting. You know, we just concluded a big project to migrate all of our repositories to a uh, new hosting infrastructure and operating system that was completed um, in May. Um, and But our next DSpace user group meeting is June 22nd, and uh, we've got a lot to talk about there, including results of a survey that the DSpace user group did of its members and you know updates from open repositories and all kinds of things. So we hope you'll you'll join us for that. And then open journal systems or the journal hosting, we are beginning a project right now to upgrade all of our hosted journals to the latest version of OJS, which is 3.3. And we're going to paste some links into chat with uh, information, not just about the user groups, but about that upgrade project as well. Um, if you are interested in learning more about the upgrade project, I encourage you to join us for the next OJS user group meeting on July 7th. And let's see. Okay, so some updates on OER uh, support. So TDL offers a host of OER services to support member institutions. Uh, we'd like to know what is working for you and learn some ways that we could improve these services that we're providing our community. So we are distributing, we have distributed a survey. And our goal with this is to gauge awareness and usage of OER support services, including our Open Education Network Consortial membership, our Pressbooks discounts, and our TDL OER Ambassador Program. Uh, your feedback is going to guide future OER at TDL support services, uh, enabling TDL to better support your needs as a member institution. That survey closes next month on July 6th, and we're going to drop a link to it in chat. I hope you, you will share your feedback with us. And I also want to thank uh, very much our OER ambassadors for leading the work on creating and distributing this survey to our community. They um, have done a great job with that. So uh, I think with that, I'm going to hand it over to Courtney to continue our service updates. Thanks, Christy. Hi, everybody. It's so good to see everyone here. I hope you're all staying cool wherever you are. Um, so let's start with digital preservation. Um, as you know, I was at Open Repositories as well last week, and I was very pleased to hear digital preservation topics interwoven into several of the presentations and panels there. Um, that's something that wasn't always the case, so it's good to see digital preservation creeping into those discussions. Uh, additionally, uh, the Preservation and Archiving Special Interest Group, or PASIG, met on Friday in Denver to discuss some key questions around value-based digital preservation advocacy and environmentally responsible infrastructure planning. We had some community notes, which we'll share here in the comments. If any of you have served on the NDSA's Digital Preservation Conference Planning Committee in the past at any time, I am inviting interested ex-committee members to a working group I'm co-chairing to rethink the way we do the annual meetings towards a more sustainable future. Please reach out to me with any interest. Um, I started the call about three weeks ago and I'll probably be open for another couple of weeks at least. And this is also a good time to remind you all um, that the next quarterly digital preservation interest group meeting is next month on July 21st. 
One of the things I'll be sharing is information about the upgrade to Chronopolis, and I'll show you the new audit control environment or ACE dashboard that we've all collaborated on improving. <clears throat> and I hope to see you there. So next up, um, research data management. The Dataverse community meeting started yesterday and is actually still going on and continues through Thursday this week. Registration for it is free, so there's still time to virtually attend some really great sessions and breakout discussions over Zoom. Um, our outgoing chair from the University of Houston, Dr. Reed Boehm, facilitated the creation of our update video for the meeting before leaving for her new position at Purdue. I'll share that link if you'd like to watch. Um, it's great, it's only about three minutes. Our upcoming TDR steering committee meeting will be the first hosted by our incoming chair, Texas Tech's Matthew McInery. And as for electronic theses and dissertations, Frank is diligently working to refine and complete migrations of Vario 3 data into new instances of Vario 4 for our members. If you need an update about when your institution can expect to work with him, please do has please do reach out to us. Also, US ETD, ETDA conference is in Cleveland this year from September 21st through the 23rd. Information and registration is available in the link we're sharing here in chat. And now I'm going to go ahead and hand off to Elliot to share a few updates about our DPLA aggregation service. Hey, everyone. Good to see you all. My name is Elliot Williams. I use he, him pronouns, and I'm the DPLA Aggregation Service Coordinator at TDL. Um, I wanted to point everyone to a new page on the TDL wiki that I've added recently, which has some frequently asked questions about our DPLA aggregation service. Um, we'll include a link to that. FAQ page in the chat. Um, I wrote these up kind of based on many of the conversations I've had um, with many of you over the last few months. So thanks to everyone who's talked to me about the service and about DPLA. And I hope this page will be a helpful resource as our members think about whether um, joining the aggregation service is right for you and sharing your metadata with DPLA. And as with all of our documentation, we want it to be as helpful as possible. So please uh, feel free if you to let me know if you have any feedback. Um, and of course, always feel free to reach out to me directly if you want to talk about DPLA and DPLA aggregation. And I'm also excited to invite you all to an event I'm hosting later this summer, the Digital Collections Summer Love-In. Um, the first Digital Collections Love-In event that we did in February was so much fun and such a great way to celebrate digital collections and exhibits that we wanted to do it again. Um, so as we all know, as we are all experiencing, Texas summers are very hot. Um, so what better way to beat the heat than uh, diving into some of the cool digital resources that all of our institutions share. So like the first Love-In, um, I think this event should be just sort of a lively, energetic chance uh, for folks to show off the digital collections and digital exhibits that, that you create and for everyone to celebrate the work that our community does. Everyone is welcome. So I hope you'll join us. I hope you'll share it with other folks at your institution who might enjoy that. Um, and I will see you there. And with that, I'm gonna hand it, up, hand it off to Leah with some updates from our members, partners, and friends. Thanks, Elliot. Good morning, everyone. This is Leah DeForest, she, her. I am the communications manager with TDL. I'm really glad you're here with us today and want to share first up two OER related deadlines that are coming up. First, the Open Texas 22 con 2022 conference has extended the deadline for proposals to this Friday. This year's conference theme is the labor of open education, which invites participants to reflect on your work and creativity and art and science of open education. The proposal is going to be submitted via CVENT, and so you'll need to create an account in CVENT, and I think it's pretty easy once you click on that CFP link. And just a reminder, those are all due this Friday, June 17th, 11.59.59. So if you're like me and have zero plans for Friday night, you might be working on your OT22 proposal. Um, and then registration for that is gonna be free. It's gonna open soon. And we also have some really exciting news coming up to share about um, the keynotes. So uh, I also wanna mention that the Open Education Network has an annual summer summit. This is a members only opportunity for the open ed community. It's an online four day event that should be very inspiring and empowering uh, so that you get some critical tools and training to help you move forward your open education initiatives. 
And since TDL is a member of the Open Education Network, all of you, all of our members are invited to participate and register for the OEN Summit. Registration is free. And I encourage you to share that information about the registration with your campus colleagues uh, and invite them to join us in as well. And uh, this, no, next week, sorry, time. Next week on June 23rd, uh, our Research Integrity Working Group is going to uh, welcome Michelle Leonard, who's the Assistant Director of Education and Training Programs in the Office of Research at the University of Florida. Michelle's gonna present on librarians as partners for promoting a culture of research integrity on campus. And she's gonna share her experience and expertise in developing partnerships and providing research integrity instruction on a big campus like University of Florida. But I wanna point out that this will apply to anyone at any level of interest, whether you do research yourself or support research this is going to this is really a, a very open um, invitation to all who are interested in learning more. I learn something every time I sit in on one of these meetings. So I hope you'll join us and bring your questions and then you'll come away with some ideas and inspiration. So now I get to introduce Cynthia Henry, who's going to share an upcoming event hosted by TDL's GIS interest group. Morning. Thank you, Leah. Um, this is Cynthia Henry, and I am the librarian for the College of Human Sciences at Texas Tech University, and I'm also the chair of the event subcommittee for our GIS interest group. Um, many of you may have heard about our successful sprint um, from last summer, and we decided to do it again. We are currently in the early stages of planning a little bit shorter mini learning sprint is what we're calling it this summer. And um, we would love for you to save the dates. It is August 9th and 10th. And um, we will have a morning session that is starting from 9 a.m. to 1030. And then we will you will work on your own in between. And then you'll come back to us um, at 4 and we'll kind of um, process questions, um, see if you had any um, places you got stuck when you were working on your own, just some good discussion wrap up for the day. Um, and the learning opportunity is intended to enable participants to experience the benefits of co-learning with a community of like-minded uh, colleagues, learn the basics of using Python, and then leveraging Python to automate GIS workflows. Um, particularly, we're looking at um, QGIS, ArcGIS Pro, ArcGIS Online, and geospatial Python packages. Now, don't get overwhelmed if all of that is a little bit above your head. We have all different levels in this class. Come and, and join it. It's free, and we and we would love to have you there. Um, our registration isn't quite ready, but we're we're getting close, and we should have that out, we think, um, near the end of June. And um, you could um, find that information from our um, listserv, but there's also a link in the um, in the chat that will get you to a page that you could set up for your listserv as well. So, thank you. Thank you, Cynthia, and to the GIS interest group who are just doing such an awesome job bringing the community together to learn together. Um, we just really want to thank you all for all you do. And so um, my last slide here is just a reminder that we have a bunch of member groups and meetings and events this month and next. We hope that you can join us, um, but we understand that lots of folks are gonna be taking your vacations and we hope you do that and find plenty of time for resting over the summer and TDL is gonna be here when you get back. So hope that if you haven't already, please be sure to sign up for our listservs and emails for our member groups. That's the best way to keep in touch and start and or join in discussions. Um, you'll also find out, find reminders for meetings, et cetera. And then we have links to um, our monthly blog posts. We took a break in May because basically what was happening at TDL in May was TCDL, but we're back with June and July and August will be on deck soon. And we've got a lot going on <laughs> for y'all to, to jump in as you like. That's it for me. Thanks everyone. All right, thanks Leah and thank you to Cynthia and Elliot and Courtney for also providing lots of good information. We have about three minutes left in our half hour. I'm gonna go ahead and stop recording our, um, 
our session now and we'll have time for questions and answers or hopefully answers to your questions.